Welcome back to the virtual hanger. Today I'm going to show you how to make this keychain or this bracelet by microweaving on your own mini loom. Your kit will include one piece of chipboard, one little ball of a very small yarn in one color, and then another ball in a variegated color, two ribbon end clamps, and two lobster claws, and one big blunt edge needle. To start, we are going to put our ribbon end clamp on one end of the um, chipboard here on the short end. Center it as best as you can, just eyeball it. Take a pencil and mark on either side. We are gonna cut this loom ourselves out of the chipboard and that's gonna tell us about how wide we need our fabric to be. So once you have those lines there, that measurement is about accurate. Um, you're just gonna make a cut every one millimeter or so um, with any pair of scissors you have, you just wanna make sure that your cuts are equidistant. Cut along the pencil mark you made and then cut about every one millimeter about that deep, um, filling up that entire thing. I think I made it to like 14 or 15 here. Um, if your last one is a little bit small, that's fine. Try and count them and make sure you will um, remember that number, write it down. Usually if I try and remember a number, I've forgotten it by the time I need it. Um, and then flip your chipboard over to the other side and go ahead and make about the same cuts. If you make sure that all your cuts are about a millimeter apart, um, then you should end up with about the same number. But uh, weaving is very forgiving, so don't worry about it too much. So we're gonna start with the solid color ball of yarn. Um, just squeeze it between the first slot there, leave about an inch or so on the back side and secure it with a piece of scotch tape. Any tape you have on hand will be fine. Um, you just don't wanna pull this out while we are uh, preparing to start weaving. So just take a piece of tape, put it on the end there on the back side. don't worry about it until later. Flip it back over. And now we are going to wrap our warp thread. So we just go up over the peg to the back side, back to the front, and then down to the other side. You want this to be taut, but not tight. You shouldn't be bending the little pegs. You're just kind of, uh, well, I bent that one, didn't I? It'll, it's pretty forgiving, like I said, just sort of bend it back with your fingers. You want it to be taut, but not so tight that you're you know, mangling the chipboard. And you're just gonna go from slot to slot, back and forth on one side to the other until you've got all the slots filled up with yarn. By cutting our loom in this way, we make sure that we're gonna make a piece of fabric that is exactly the width of our ribbon end clamps. You can, of course, use this technique to make fabric in just about any size. When you get to the end, go ahead and cut, leave a couple of inches there just in case. Um, and on the back side again, we're just gonna secure that extra piece there with our uh, piece of tape, and that is our warp thread. Weaving is done by crossing two threads in perpendicular directions. So we're gonna cut a big long piece here of our variegated color. Um, I think I did about, mm, I just stretched my arms out as wide as they could go and I did it twice. So um, make an L with your fingers and we are going to wrap in a figure eight motion that thread around our two fingers. We're making a little sort of a bobbin here um, because you can't pull an entire ball of thread through your warp thread. It's just too wide. But this little uh, little uh, bobbin thing we're making here is gonna be much easier to get through while we're actually weaving. So just pinch it right in the center, pull it off your fingers, um, take one side here, and uh, with that, the original bit that we started, the light end there, you can tell, um, just get it out of the way. Take this dark edge, wrap it around the center of our little figure eight here. Um, just a couple of times until it's nice and tight and then uh, loop it under that last go around just to make sort of a slip knot. You don't want to tie a real knot here. That would be kind of a pain. Just a tension knot. So we have one end there with a tail and then the light end there. So we are going to thread our blunt needle here with the edge of the thread that we just tied around the center of our uh, bobbin there. Um, so the dark end not the light end, if you happen to have done it the exact same way I did. But the end that we just looped around and tied in that slip knot, I'm gonna just thread through the blunt edge of that needle. And then I'm actually going to just tie this in probably visually the most complicated way, but it, it is really just a simple overhand knot. 
Normally when uh, you thread a needle for sewing, you don't want to tie a knot here because it'll get caught on the fabric. I like to tie a knot here because it ensures that I'm not going to accidentally uh, lose my needle off the end of my my weaving thread here. So I won't have to waste any time looking for that needle and I can just use it to weave. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna take, uh, I like to go right to left because I'm right-handed. Take your needle, just go over and under and over and under. It doesn't matter which way you start, um, but you can see you just wanna alternate over, under, over, under. Go ahead and pull your little bobbin here uh, all the way through, straighten it out and then just kind of tug both ends down to the bottom. I left about an inch or two here. I'm just gonna sneak it through that last uh, slot here to the back side, pull it to the back, um, right where our other thread is and just hit it with a little bit, bit of tape. You really don't need to do that, but I like to make sure my stuff is extra secure. Um, we're gonna come back the other way. You'll notice that I'm working at the top now. Um, I rotate it 180 degrees, so I'm always going from right to left but I put my needle through the opposite way, over, under, over, under, over, under. Whichever way I did the previous row, you wanna do the opposite on the next row. Um, I like to, when I pull that row tight, kind of comb it up with the, the needle there and grab the corner um, so that, I have anxiety so I always pull my threads too tight, um, but you don't wanna bunch the fabric too much. You wanna give it a little bit of room to breathe. As you uh, keep weaving, you'll run out of thread here. You're just gonna pull from the edge that's closest to your work. And because of the way we wound that uh, bobbin, it should just pull straight from the center, tuck your uh, threads up and keep going. So you can see it got a nice even weave going here. And that's the majority of this project. You get a little bored, you wanna put a stripe of the solid color in. This is how you would change colors or change threads, say if you ran out. Um, cut a piece of thread of the opposite color or your new color or more of your same color. And this is called a weaver's knot. So you take uh, the new thread, make kind of a shepherd hook there. We are going to take our old thread, put it underneath the hook, go around the hook, thread that underneath the, the start of our old thread here and then pull it through the top from the underside of the top of that shepherd's hook. It's a little bit confusing. Again, it's called a weaver's knot. If you um, need a visual, there are plenty of Google image results that will help you. Um, the advantage of this knot is that it's pretty strong and you can trim these edges fairly close to the knot. This is much closer than I would ever trim anything if I was sewing or doing hand embroidery or something like that. Um, in weaving, you actually do wanna have minimal edges so that as you um, weave, you don't have a big lump in the middle of your bracelet or if you were doing this on a larger scale in the middle of your blanket, you wanna be able to hide that. You could leave the edges longer and weave them in um, and that kind of hides them as well if you were doing this on a larger scale, but on this micro scale, it can be a little bit difficult to hide the ends. So I did movie magic, I skipped all the way to the end here. Um, you just wanna keep weaving until you get as close to the pegs on the other side as you can. Uh, again, this is a great do it in front of the TV project, throw it in your purse, do it while you're waiting at the doctor's office or whatever. Um, it's just nice to have something to do with your hands when you're just kind of chilling. Don't anticipate that you're gonna get this done in one day, it's gonna take you a while. Once you're as close to the end there as you can be, I just pull it off of the pegs on the end. Um, you can see the loops there. Um, the natural friction created by lots of threads rubbing up against each other keeps this weaving pretty uh, consistently textured, I will say. I have anxiety, so I just go through another round um, after I pull it off the pegs, but you don't really need to. I was just trying to fill the loop as much as possible. Once you've got um, both threads on the same side, which if you're smart, you will do before you pull off the pegs or you can kind of fight it like I did in the video to get them on the same side. Just tie it in a simple overhand knot, just a little double square knot, and then um, take your scissors, trim it there on the edge. It's not gonna be perfect, but you made it by hand and that's awesome. So um, once you've got one side finished, you're gonna just go ahead and pull the other side right off of your little mini loom here and do the exact same thing. This time my threads were on the same side, so I just went ahead and tied them in the double knot. I didn't worry about filling up that extra blank space. 
the ribbon clamps are big enough that they're going to cover that. So we can now toss that piece of chipboard. You don't need it anymore, or you probably have a lot of thread left over if you want to make 80 more of these. If you want to do a keychain, you would just do one ribbon clamp and clamp the two edges together in the clamp in the manner that I'm about to show you. But I'm going to turn this one into a bracelet because I already did that green one for a keychain. So you just take one ribbon end clamp. Um, you're just kind of going to make sure that the little thing there covers all of the loose threads. You definitely want it to cover the knot. And use whatever you have on hand to just squeeze the metal into itself. It's got teeth on the end, the teeth will interlock, and that keeps the woven fabric locked nice and tight inside the metal, and it'll keep your weaving from coming undone. You can see, because I used the needle nose there a little bit, I kind of bent the metal. Something flatter like these pliers would make it maybe a little cleaner towards the end, just a nice consistent smoosh on the entire clamp. I'm gonna do that on the other side so it looks nice. Um, but really, you can, you know, you probably could even just bang on it until it's shut. It would be fine. So to finish these off and turn it into a bracelet, I included two little lobster claws. Um, you just open up the little kind of O-ring here, stick it on the end of the ribbon and clamp, and then squeeze it back together. If you don't have pliers, you can come into the hanger and use ours. You could probably get it done with tweezers or whatever else you have on hand. Um, and that is our bracelet. That is all there is to it. This, the video is quite short because it's a long project, but um, keychain or bracelet, I would love to see what you guys make. Please tag us on social media and I will see you next time.